Hello and welcome back to the sixth episode of the Automated Special Series that focuses on SAP automation and integration with Power Automate. So in this episode, I will show you how to build an SAP GUI-based automation that leverages pure no-code capabilities found in Power Automate Desktop. So here we are in Power Automate Desktop. This is the Power Automate Desktop console. Throughout the sessions, you might hear me say PAD, uh, P-A-D, which stands for Power Automate Desktop. And here we see a list of uh, desktop flows I've authored, I'm the owner of, and here are the ones which have been uh, shared with me. So here we see a list of um, boilerplate templates. You see I've searched here for boilerplate SAP. This is listing now all the desktop flows which match that search term here. So what is a boilerplate template? I usually define them if I plan to do an application automation more than once or twice. This gives me, you know, a kickstart to the automation because it's usually involving uh, logging on to a system, doing some processing in that system, then logging off, or maybe for reconciliation process also do some Excel uh, manipulation and so on. So I like to do these as a starter template from desktop flow side, but also from a cloud flow. I usually have a trigger boilerplate uh, matching to that specific uh, application as well, where I might get, for instance, credentials from Azure Key Vault, uh, secure credentials, or feed in different documents and, and data, maybe from Dataverse and other systems as well. So here we have for SAP GUI-based operations, we have uh, three options, uh, the no-code, low-code, and pro-code. We will start with the no-code option. Let me double-click. So here we have the main document flow. Uh, let's skip the main exception block for now. But uh, I have split up my boilerplate template here into different sections. So I have one uh, section which deals with uh, the logon sequence. Then I have the core processing once the application has been opened. And then at the end, when I'm done, I'm doing here log off as well. On the right hand side, you see a set of uh, variables. Here, this uh, highlighted one with white background. This is an indication that this is an uh, output variable. So if I click on that, you will see there are two types of variables, input and output. And here, uh, with a gray background, uh, those are input variables. So in order to log on to an SAP system, you need to, of course, to know which uh, client to log on, uh, what passwords, um, the username, and what system ID. You can, for testing purposes like I did, uh, specify here that this is the input variable name which will be supplied from the outside, usually from a cloud flow. Or if you're triggering this from the console, then you can also supply these uh, variables part of the calling flow. Now for the data type, you have two options. You have option uh, plain text. If you switch this to, to plain text, then whatever you write here uh, will be, of course, then in uh, plain text and viewable. And if you select this as a sensitive text, which I have done here, both by supplying a default value just for debugging purposes or feeding it from the outside. Uh, so this is what actually what you would like to do. So here I specify my client ID and I say update. Then you have to define also an external name, a speed name you see here with the space and also some description if it's if it needs more explanation what this parameter should be doing and then I have done this for all four of these variables I've specified here the same thing you see that that is masked with these uh, round circles here all following the same principle right you have a variable internal name then you have a default value and external and description here as well and this we will come to the, in a second so next, let's rename this to something more meaningful by right-clicking on it. SAP um, create purchase requisition. And you will notice all these. So as you can see here, those subflows, they are empty. And they have been left empty on purpose, especially the log on and log off sequence. Just to simulate once how you can do those uh, login activities in Power Automate Desktop. Depending on the authentication type and mechanism your organization use, you might need uh, to enter your credential into a secure client application first and then log into SAP or you directly use SAP logon like in our example to log into SAP. There are different ways to achieve that. You could use the desktop recorder and then go on your start button and start for searching SAP logon and then click on that and every step you would do and click you do here in that system would be captured by the desktop recorder. So there's an easier way and I think a more resilient way to do that uh, by calling the executable for SAP logon directly. And for that we have a, an action which is called run application. So just to show you the list of actions here, we have approximately 400 of them. 
And if I search here, run application, this will list then anything which matches uh, that search term. So then I drag and drop this over to the canvas and I select my executable, which is usually on program files x86, SAP, frontend, SAP GUI, and then here you can search for SAP logon, and this should give you uh, one entry here you can select from. Say open and then uh, save. So we have two options now to test that this action works. Since uh, this is the first action we have uh, created in that overall desktop flow, we could either run it here from run, that will then execute everything in sequential order, or we can go much more convenient right clicking on that action we would like to test and then click on uh, run from here. So this should open the SAP uh, dialog and present us with the SAP log on screen. And here you go. So for the rest of the SAP log on sequence, we can use the desktop recorder. Let me click on that. And then you have two options here. The new option is the image recording in case you are operating in a Citrix environment or remote desktop environment and you don't have access to install anything on the target system or the standard way which is through UI based uh, element recognition. And this is what we are going to use in our example here. So let me cl uh, click on record. Everything I'm doing now on my desktop uh, will be captured as uh, click events or double click events and selections and so on. So we start by searching for a specific uh, SID or instance here to log on to SAP. I could start by typing here S5H. This is the SID here, as you can see. And instead of hard coding this, I have already the option during the recording phase to select one of the variables I have predefined in Power Automate Desktop. So let me search that and then click on variable. And here you have then the option to select the appropriate variable to filter also for them. Uh, since this is the system ID, I will also select here the system ID as input variable. Then I make sure that the red bounding box is again highlighted here around the area I would like to activate. So let me double click. And this you can see has now registered a double click event. And I can already rename this uh, to the system ID double click. Now, the first thing I would like to supply is, of course, the client ID. For that, I select that and replace the text with my text. I can delete this. This was a drag UI element function. So, here again, instead of using a hard coded this uh, client ID, I can use one of the variables we have here, which is client ID. Can also rename this from mandant which is german and stands for client id or company id so let's say client and then i go ahead and supply also the user and here again selecting my variable and this time the sap user i also rename this to username so i can find it easier later on and then last but not least is the password. And you will notice it didn't capture any text here because it has identified this as a password field potentially containing sensitive information. So here you can again point to a variable instead and select the password. All right, so once this is done, I just have to select now the execution button here, make sure that the bounding box is visible again before you click and then click on that. Perfect, so let me hit finish. And here you will see now all the recorded actions being uh, added to that uh, flow sequence. If you have forgotten to rename one of the field during recording, you can always go back to those controls and then do that uh, afterwards. So for that, we can go here and rename the password field under UI elements, go to the UI elements and then click on these three dots and then rename element. So this is the password and this was, I think, the go button. So now let's test it again. For that, make sure that you have uh, closed all SAP windows. This as well. Right click and run from here. Perfect. So this has worked. Let me minimize this and this as well. And then let's save. And since we have the SAP window still open, we can also do the SAP log of uh, sequence. For that, we can leverage the UI automation action. 
windows and then the close window and then capture the window with the add UI element function. We can select our SAP windows. First the SAP easy access. For that you have to go in the outer corner. Press control and left click. And then as a second window also the SAP logon. Left click while holding also the control key. Alright, click done. And the first window as I said was the SAP uh, easy access we need to close. And then we can right click, copy, right click, uh, paste or control C, control V. And then select the next action. And here the window SAP logon. Okay. So let's try this as well. You can right click, run from here. And this has worked and both SAP windows have now been closed. And we can run that from the beginning. We can for now disable the, the center part, which is the core processing. We didn't specify anything for that yet. So let's run this from the beginning. And closing the windows and finishing the processing. Okay, so now let's uh, look at the middle part here, which is doing some processing in SAP. For that, let me actually open SAP through the scripting. We disable this again and this. Just run through the logon sequence. Okay, that's the window state I wanted to have. And now from here on, what we can do is the following. We can go to the SAP Create PR uh, subflow. So to demonstrate the uh, no-code capabilities, we will leverage again the desktop recorder. This time, just entering a new uh, address, temporary address, to an employee record. Let's go ahead and press record. And I open the SAP UI. And here again, provide a transaction code. This time, uh, PA30, which is for uh, HR data maintenance and either click on that button here or hit enter here as well. You see it has registered a send key which is return. Now the first part is to specify the personal number. We can also rename this here. This is the personnel number and we say 2. And this 2 we can again assign a variable to if we have one or provide just a normal text. We can change this later. Okay, then the info type should be 0006. This is the info type and the subtype is 2. We select here today and say new. Temporary residence address line would be on Microsoft Way and city would be Redmond. Don't forget to change this here as well. So this is a city. This is the street. Then we have uh, the uh, state, which is WA. And then we have here 98052, which is the state. And here the zip code. And last but not least, we select also USA. You can hear USA. And then save. This has created a new temporary address record. Let's go back here and press finish. So all these fields have been uh, created. So sometimes you might have clicked something wrong, some you know somewhere else, or the focus was not right. So you can test this by uh, clicking on that specific uh, action here and then say uh, run from here. So let's see what this will be doing. This should activate now the windows, provide the transaction code, hitting enter, personal number, Info type, subtype, today's date, pressing a new, the street and uh, city, state, country, press the save button and exit. Perfect. I have noticed that there is a couple of uh, USA drop downs, so we can optimize that. Let's just keep the latest one. And this one is OK. And then LAND. LAND stands for country. Good. Let's save. We close the SAP UI. So we can test it end to end.
we go to main, enable the action which we have previously disabled, click save, and then run. Great, so this has worked end to end. You can now further optimize that no code option by providing dynamic values to the uh, input fields. So let me show an example. Instead here, providing the personal number as a hard-coded uh, string of two, we could create an input variable and name it uh, personal number of type text. Specify a value of 2, for instance, as a default. Whenever this is then supplied from the outside, the default is, of course, ignored. This is for debugging purposes while you are here in the authoring experience. So, personal number. And here again. And now click on that uh, action here. And instead of a 2, we can just use that variable we just defined. Personal number. So the next time this runs, it will be using the default value or whatever value have been passed in from the outside. Let me save that. And let's head over to the Power Automate Desktop console. Here's our purchase requisition flow. And if I say uh, run, it will ask me to provide parameters for all the variables we have defined. You see, it's respecting the default values because I'm still within the local console and also the personal number. I could have here supplied now a different number. So let's make sure that uh, no SAP window is uh, currently running. And then we hit OK. And this will now run also much faster than the previous debugging mode within the authoring experience. You see it has taken the personal number here as input variable instead of a hard-coded value and again provides the uh, address information and saves the record. closes the application and then returns the processing result because we have said this is our um, output variable as a result here to this uh, flow. Now let's look at the last uh, step which is providing some exception handling in case you know a window is not available or wrong data has been supplied or some SAP window was popping up in, in the meantime which then might have led to a failed click event and so on in Power Admin Desktop. So let me edit that flow again. And for that we have the exception handler. So you might recall that in the main flow we had this main exception block. What should happen in case of a failure here? So if we double click on that to look at the properties, in case of a failure, I have specified here a, a rule which says if you fail whatever action within these subflows, uh, run a subflow which is the exception handler. So in here I have defined the exception handler. It uses an action which is called get last error. This will get the last error of the desktop flow execution. And then I will be setting a value of my output variable here to the last error message, which has been returned to this get last error variable. Okay. And then because an error occurred in either of these three uh, subflows, I'm stopping the flow with an error message and of type uh, error and the message with the last error, which includes the whole variable which has been returned here. And this concludes the SAP purchase requisition automation, leveraging pure low-code tooling in Power Automate Desktop.